We put together the following video to give you a demonstration of Cicero. Um, what follows are outtakes from three different classes with one of our eighth grade students, Jade. Um, you'll see her participate in an English class, a math class, and then finally uh, a Latin class. The whole thing lasts 20 some odd minutes, so feel free to kind of you know, skip around. But we wanted to give you, you know, look and feel of what it's like to uh, participate in one-on-one -on -one learning with Cicero. Awesome. Um, how was your week? It was really good, actually. Yeah. Really? Tell yeah. me about it. Um, well, I've started this new theater thing. Well, I'm about to start it, um, which is really exciting. Um, and a little scary because it's very complicated. Um, yeah, that's about it. I still haven't heard back from Oxbridge, which um, is sort of suspicious because I feel like if I had gotten a scholarship then they would have sent me an email. Interesting. But maybe it, yeah. it wasn't too long ago that you applied. They said two weeks, which is about like this time now okay i'll keep yeah. my fingers crossed but in the meantime yeah. you got you got such good news last week about your essay that yes <laughs> continue to celebrate that it's the best yeah um and your theater program are you going mm -hmm. once a week a couple times a week once a week yeah okay awesome yeah it sounds it sounds so great i'm excited yeah. to hear more about it um yeah Amazing, amazing. Um, so I know we, we talked relatively recently and we had relatively, um, compared to the normal amount of days we have between our sessions, um, little time to, to work. Um, but it looks based on the, the link you shared with me, like you made some pretty great progress on your Kindred paper. So yeah, um, should we actually, since, since we have the option to do it on Zoom. Should we pull it up and take a look together? Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. Where I talk about, you know, Alice first and her relationship with Rufus yeah. and a little bit about how that's different than Dana's relationship with Rufus. And then yeah. I think the next paragraph talks about, um, or I talk about how um, Dana's relationship with Alice is complicated and all of that but I don't know if I actually want to talk about that I don't know if that ties into intersectionality at all like I don't know yeah all right let's let's start by kind of unpacking the evidence that you think you're going to use for Alice um, and a little bit more about kind of what you want to say about the ways intersectionality is influencing her dynamic with, with Rufus, mm -hmm. um, and then we can figure out the Dana piece. Because I, I do think yeah. it's interesting, especially given how, how closely tied we are to Dana's narration, um, mm -hmm. to try to make that connection. But I yeah. think if we flip the Alice piece all the way out, it'll make that easier to do. Um, so talk me through kind of the evidence, um, the moments in the text that you want to investigate uh, as you consider Alice. I know you've got page numbers in there. Um, let's get like, let's get actual language into the, into the realm um, so that we can talk like at the level of quotation analysis. So what do you, what are you kind of drawing towards here? Um, I think I'm drawn towards um, the way that Rufus talks about Alice and the way that, you know, we like have these conversations of Dana and Rufus and they bring up Alice. And I think in both of those sections, 122 to 124 and 148 to 154, in both of them, that's something that's happening where they're both talking about Alice and it becomes apparent that Rufus um, views Alice really in a really bad way. Like it's, very disturbing you know we we read this for the first time we were like oh we want to move on we don't want to read this for a long time 
Yes. But yeah, so I think that's where I want to delve in into that like language of Rufus showing his love and and how he views Alice and then Dana trying to counter that but not seeming like she's trying to counter it kind of like Good. just challenging his ideas about Alice um and about her race and her gender and everything and then whether that works out whether Dana is able to influence him in this way and to change his view of Alice Excellent. Excellent, Jade. I think that's a, that's a fantastic plan. Um, and you'll notice you're already bringing, you're already actually bringing Dana in just in the way that you're thinking about how she's attempting, because at this point in the text, she still believes Rufus is capable of being saved. Um, yeah. So she's trying to kind of change his worldview about the, the very pieces of Alice's identity that you're talking about. Um, and of course we know ultimately this proves impossible to do. Um, but here, like we, we actually do see Dana trying to enter into that, di that dynamic. So I think that would be, that's a really interesting place to go. Um, I think you're, you're sort of saying this, but let's just tease it out. So you've got it, you've got it fully on the paper. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how do you see this intersection of Alice's identities playing out in Rufus's world. Oh boy, we're gonna be famous. <laughs> <laughs> Millions of views watching, <laughs> right? watching this next Green Mountain video. <laughs> How was the weekend? It was pretty good, yeah. Are you ready but, to learn the third method? Yes. Because this is like, I this like particular, that. you're like, it's so tiny in my screen. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but this is like a perfect problem for me to show you like this other method that I think we're about to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do is I'm strategically going to line up one over the other. Ooh. Why do you think I might line them up one over the other? Um, oh, because you, do you either subtract or add the bottom one to the top one? I'm not sure which one is it subtraction or addition okay so before you pick which one you're going to try what yeah. do you think the what do you think the point is of adding the two of them or subtracting them what do you um, want to come well out of it you would want x plus y equals something okay ideally or you would just want like an equation that is like a combination of the two. Okay. So what I want you to do is change nothing right now and add them just straight down, just add okay. and see what happens. Okay. Yes, except I see one, I see one little mistake. What happened? I agree that X minus X equals zero. Oh, oh, I see it now. Y, Y? Yep. Okay, yeah. keep going. Okay. Okay. So why is that different than your answer? That's the question. Um, because, oh, I think because I was solving 
it I was solving both equations separately so I got two answers for y we because okay what okay we talked about this last week but like when you get when you when you solve a system of mm -hmm. what do these equations look like a system of equations yeah but like on a graph what would these two things look like um two lines yes so what what will be the answer to the system like what does that mean graphically oh it's the point where the lines meet uh -huh. so we should get the same there's just one point right yeah I mean, unless they never meet or they are the same line. Yeah. We should get we should get one single x y point that is the solution. Just one. Yeah. I'm not sure which one is correct though. If we put the x value in both of them, then we get different answers. That means that there's something that means that that X value is probably not right. Oh. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back here. I'm going to go. Okay. Apparently I'm using red today, which I'm not super happy about. Okay, let's double check. Let's double check. I'll check this one. You check this one for mistakes. Okay. Wait, the second one. That's the one I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Let's get it right down here. Oh, I see a mistake already. Where? Look at this. Isn't it x plus two y equals fourteen? Oh right. Okay. Okay. So that would have oh, messed up. Oh, I see something as well. Thing. You do. Okay. That's so supposed to be plus. Okay, so we've got x. Oh my gosh. Can what? I just give some advice right now? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Equals value method, you can solve for y in both. But if it's easier to solve for x in both, that's fine. Oh. Check this one out over here. You can get x just by like 14 minus 2y and you're done, right? Yeah. And really, this it's similar over here. Like you're not going to end up with any fractions if you solve for x. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you do you. Why don't you work on this for a little bit and see if you can get to that like uh, solution? Uh -huh. What? Huh. Interesting. We have like four different solutions for y now. This is yeah, no, 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 no. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. Wait. I see a little, a little something going on in just your last. Wait, step. did I make a mistake? Yeah, you did. <clears throat> oh my goodness! You're all right. You're doing great. Oh wait, no, oh, no, I got it. I always do this. I forget the five, and then okay, I don't chase anymore. But and then what do you get for y? Eight. Oh. There we go. Okay. I don't know what was happening over there in the right hand corner, but. <laughs> so, okay, so you got the same thing here as we got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we have to put it back into both equations, the value. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep.
forgot it was Valentine's Day. You're not a very good husband. Do your <laughs> <laughs> does your family do anything um, special for Valentine's Day? No, not really. Um, I mean, my parents went out last night to like a like a special thing. Like it was just couples. There were no kids, so I think that counts. But not really anything today. That's. I mean, it's a Monday. What are you gonna do? So. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting the same value for X. So I think that's right. Okay. Like, let's say this, let's say this came on a test, right? Mm -hmm. You confronted this situation. How would you know that you were getting the right answer? Um, well, I mean, just by seeing it, just by knowing now that we're only supposed to have one value each for X and Y, mm -hmm. um, and not two for Y and one for X, that's just mm -hmm. like, that doesn't work. Um, but I think you could also graph it. Heck yeah. That's what I was hoping you were gonna say. It's like, it's like we can do all this algebra and we can double check and we get the same thing. That's great. And it's so easy to plug these things into Desmos and to get an answer and be like, oh, I was right. Or, no, I was wrong. Yeah. And from me, as the person who gives you the test, what I really want you to be able to understand is to be able to like coordinate all these methods and be like, well, like the graph makes sense because of this and the algebra makes sense and they fit together. I want you to see the yeah. whole picture. So why not graph it, right? Yeah. All right, so go graph it. Post a picture in here for us so we can see what it is. Uh, I can't graph it. I'm screen sharing. Okay, I'll graph it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I could graph it on the... So how are you? Anything new and exciting this week? Um, actually, yes, I do. Um, I apply. I recently applied to a scholarship at Oxford. That's great. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you've got a lot of cool stuff yeah. going on. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I have a, a mystery for us to start today. Um, hopefully. Okay. So I've got this item here. And for scale, it's big, um, not like size of a house big, but you can see it's kind of on a dock and it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah. large size. So, you know, what are, what are some of the questions that we normally ask when faced with an artifact that can help us get some information? Um, what it's made out of, mm -hmm. um, where it's from, and when? basically sure i mean and a lot of those things you won't be able to determine but some of it you can do with your eyes so like size always yeah. helps you always want to make sure you know how big an artifact is because some things will look massive and then there's a ruler next to it it's like two inches you know yeah um, so this is um what material does it look like it might be made out of um i think some sort of like metal like okay. like steel or something i don't know i'm not good with metals so <laughs> putting, this up, putting this stuff in chat um yeah so it's some kind of metal fine and um what else are you noticing um, about it and this is a very simplified version of this um, story um and they started getting into it with uh the carthaginians um carthage was a venetian settlement where um actually i can bring that back up where uh um tunisia is today so carthage was like in here, right? Um, yeah. And so the Romans started, you know, getting into it with the Carthaginians and the Carthaginians all, of course, had this great Navy. And these are what are called the Punic Wars. There were three of them, Hannibal featured in the uh, second one, I think. And so um, the way this, that the Romans kind of figured out how to build a ship was they like, there was like a wrecked ship you know, essentially um, that they recreated and they were essentially doing like dry land practice 
And so obviously their first forays into the sea were pretty poor, Um, but they got the hang of it, you know, but initially they just got trounced because they didn't know what they were doing. They reconstructed the ship and they're doing kind of like dry land exercises. But anyway, at least that's the story, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I think it's the fun, uh, it's a fun um, legend, you know? So anyway, Um, and I'm interested too, like, I'm wondering as we kind of do this, this uh, chapter that's on the maritime life in Rome, if there are any, if there's, you know, as somebody who sails, I don't know if you wanted to do any kind of research on Roman vessels and compare them to, you know, modern day, or if you wanted to do any kind of projects like that, is that something that would interest you? Actually, yeah, I think it would, yeah. Cool. Well, let's, um, we can peep through and see what I'm sure very limited resources they have in your textbook to start you off. But I know I have stuff about Roman ships that I can send you. Um, Pretty interesting. And, you know, Venetian ones to a degree too, although that's all very theoretical. We're not totally, totally sure what they looked like, but we know that this drew from that. Um, Great. All right. Well, we can, let's talk about that more at the end of the period and see what that might look like, you know, how you would want to lay that out, whether you'd want to do a paper or a presentation or like some like a 3d model or whatever um you can think about that all right so you also laid out your vocab for today beautifully and you caught a mistake because i was being lazy um actually i was just on autopilot portus is absolutely a fourth uh declension noun we don't know fourth declension yet we'll learn it it's easy um but yeah i was like probably watching TV or something as I was doing that. I was like, we're just pretty. but you're right. It's portus, portus, which is the genitive for fourth. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind because they're starting to sneak forth the clenching nouns in there. So when we look at Ostia, yeah. the story of Ostia, we'll look at that. Um, do you feel ready for me to throw some of your vocab words into chat and see if you know them? You'll probably yeah. know a lot of them just by osmosis. So hold on, okay. let me just... 